Hi, I'm Mary Colbert. Welcome to Dr. Colbert's podcast, Divine Health Podcast. Hey, and I'm Dr. Don Colbert. We've got some exciting news today, and we're talking about migraine headaches. Mary, I've been treating these for 35 years, and used to, we'd just give them a medication like Imitrex or We'd give them Topamax or uh, meds like that or Elevil and different meds. But now we find we can treat these naturally, and we find there's a step approach. We need to first and foremost identify the foods. There's almost always trigger foods, but we're going to talk about all this, how to approach it in a natural way by healing the GI tract, supporting the mitochondria that produce energy, by balancing those hormones. There's menstrual migraines. I got to tell you, Don, it's amazing. Years ago, when the Lord started giving you answers to migraine, because we are of the belief that there is an answer for every disease in the earth. And so it's our job to try to find those answers. And most of the time, it's not a drug. It's natural means. So if you know someone who is suffering from migraines, you want to make an absolute point to give them this podcast. Let them listen to it. It's free. We're going to tell you what to do, how to do it, what to take, how much to take. Don, I remember years ago, we were flying into Virginia to do a (laughs) meeting. Uh, We were speaking at a church a conference, which we often would do these health conferences at churches. And we flew in. And when we got off the plane, there was this entire family. Mm -hmm. And this was back when before. This was 20 years ago. Yeah, where you didn't have the restrictions through the gate like you do today. And you could literally go right to the gate. Remember those days if you wanted to walk someone all the way to the gate before them getting on the plane? Well, that's during this period of time because when we came off the plane, there was this entire family standing there waiting to meet us. They said, we heard you were here, that you were coming, and I just had to come. Here's my family, my kids, the wife and all. We just had to meet you and say thank you, Dr. Colbert. We got my mom. We got our wife back. And I was like in shock. He goes, no, you don't understand. The, the father began telling us. My wife suffered with such severe migraines. The medicine was off the chart. She would go to bed at weeks at a time with the migraine. The house has to get quiet. Everybody has to be quiet. Has to be totally dark. Yeah, Yeah, it has to be dark. He goes, when she would have a migraine, it would put us all on a horrible shutdown. Right, no loud noises. Everyone has got to be quiet. The house has to be dark or her room has to be dark. It was so sad. And um, a lot of people who aren't aware of people who suffer from migraines and how it affects the whole family. But it, this was eye-opening for me. I was like, whoa, yeah, I knew it would hurt people, but I had no idea how it will spill over into other people's lives. And he goes, since we read your little book, The Bible Cure for Headache. um, Headaches, which now is light years, you've got more information oh my goodness, than that yeah. little book That was book 20 has. years ago. I know. <laughs> Uh, but just from what you put in that little booklet. But you know the key thing that did it for her, Mary, it's the simplest thing, yeah. the cheapest thing. I know. Increasing her water yeah. to about one and a half to two quarts a day and drinking that little four ounces of water, four to eight ounces per I hour remember. during the day. I was cu- in shock. And she said literally that transformed her life. And it was alkaline water because her body was acidic. And then what, what water does? It hydrates the body. Mm-hmm. One of the biggest triggers of headaches and migraines is dehydration. And just the simple fact of hydrating the body, hydrating the brain, opening up those blood vessels, but it also helps with detoxing the liver, it improves the GI tract, and we find a lot of migraines associated with sluggish liver, uh, poor liver detoxification, gallbladder dysfunction, uh, sluggish bowel, leaky gut or increased intestinal permeability, dysbiosis, but just plain old constipation. And just water is many times all you need with a little fiber like psyllium husk fiber or our fiber zone. And it is amazing how with the water and the fiber, how, how many times headaches go away, especially migraines, but also tension. But let's talk about migraines. First, let's define it. Uh, migraine headaches are just simply these throbbing, pulsating, pounding headaches that last anywhere from hours to days. And they're usually, the classical migraines especially, are preceded by an aura, such as flashing lights or blind spots. And many times people have problems speaking and they experience tingling on one side of their face or on their arm, one arm or one leg. And other symptoms include 
light and noise sensitivity, nausea, and vomiting. These are just classic. These are vascular headaches. Now, a simple little remedy that I've used for decades is just I have them go drink a cup or two of coffee or a little one or two shots of espresso. And for some people, it's amazing. It's miraculous. It just stops it, but they got to drink enough water or else the coffee will make them dehydrated. So just a little bit of espresso, but some people, coffee can make their migraines worse. So again, what, what I've learned since then is we have to support certain organs and tissues in the body. Number one, I think water. That's the most important thing. The best water, I think, is alkaline water. You can get an alkalinizer for your house. You can get an alkaline pitcher, or you can get Essentia or Evermore or these alkaline waters. They sell at Whole Foods and other places. You know, it's amazing, Don. People don't think about this, but if people are coffee drinkers, soda drinkers, tea drinkers. Real acidic. You know, not only acidic, but it they, the caffeine dehydrates your body. And so that can trigger a migraine. It's amazing when people with migraines, they don't think about they need to drink pure, clean right, water exactly. so much to hydrate the brain. And that's part of the pain exactly. they're feeling. Well, that's exactly. Amazing. That's why if you drink coffee, it's so important to drink extra water, especially if you drink more coffee. And if you drink those one or two espressos, you've got to drink more water or else it can make some headaches worse. But so water is number one. It's simple and expensive. And again, don't be drinking alkaline water when you're eating your food. A lot of people make that mistake. Drink, It'll upset your stomach. Yeah. Right. It's too much alkalinity. So you want to drink it between meals. And, and some people, again, you don't need alkaline water all day long. The most you need is probably about 16 ounces a day. You don't need to buy huge bottles of that and drink it all day or you get too alkalinized. Yeah, your stomach has its own alkaline level for digestion and if you're adding alkaline water while drink, eating, well, you're you're me- you'll be messing with your own alkaline. You'll be putting yeah. out the acid right. that your stomach's supposed to be producing. And then you next thing you know, you're sick in the stomach and you wonder why it's that water. Now, the other thing, water. the reason we have such great success in treating migraines is we treat the whole body. And the, I tell people, patients, the foundation of your health, even for migraines, is the gut. The gut is the key. There's a strong gut-brain connection. There are so many foods that are migraine trigger foods, and we're going to discuss these in just a minute. But so that's one reason when we repair the gut, a lot of these food sensitivities go away because we find the leaky gut, which I discuss in detail in my book, The Gut Zone, and that's a book I wrote two years ago. But it really shows you a healthy diet that heals the gut as well as probiotics that help to restore the gut as well as simply gut restorative supplements like our collagen, which is one of the best. Our hydrolyzed collagen helps to restore the gut. But anyway, but you know, I, I like to emphasize here food sensitivity. That is completely different, people, than having an allergic reaction. If We're not talking about having allergic problems. We're talking about a sensitivity problem. And it's amazing how many food sensitivities is associated to all kinds of issues that people are fighting with and they don't even realize it. It's just, you know, they're waiting for an anaphylactic kind of reaction. That's well, not, no, there's food yeah. allergies. With right. food allergies, you get swollen lips, swollen tongue, hives, urticaria, itching. That's an allergy. With food sensitivities, these can happen hours to days after eating a food. But these food sensitivities are common triggers of migraines. There's three classes of foods that are the most common triggers to migraines. We call them, number one, the phenylethylamine foods, which is chocolate. Chocolate is a major migraine trigger because this is an amine, phenylethylamine, that causes those cerebral blood vessels to dilate, creating migraine. For some people, not for everyone, but for a lot of my patients, Dark chocolate or any chocolate. The darker the chocolate, usually the worse the migraine. The other foods are the tyramine. These are amines, tyramine foods, which are cheeses. The more fermented the cheese, the worse the uh, headache, typically. And like Parmesan cheese, really a bad headache trigger. So the tyramine foods, those are your tyramine foods. Then there's the histamine foods and the sulfates, especially wine. Red wine is the worst. And beer. We find that these foods are major headache triggers. But then the histamine. Histamine is what is released by the mast cells that causes the itching when you have an allergy. Now, what happens is certain foods are high in histamine, such as uh, most meat. 
Uh, and I remember when uh, Mary had taken an antibiotic and she developed this horrible rash over her body that burned and it was because she had developed increased inter intestinal permeability from the antibiotic and candida and she had uh, she was really sensitive to the histamine in these foods. So I had to put her on a low histamine diet along with restoring her gut, repairing her gut and destroying the yeast. And within a month, I said, give me a month and we'll clear it. And within literally one month, it cleared. But do you want to tell them a little about that, Mary? Because that was histamine in the foods you were eating. Right. But I, I've never had migraines. I've never had uh, headache issues. Uh, this was a completely different issue. I'd had a sore throat. And then I took this generic antibiotic, which I will never do again, to address the strep throat. But, yeah, one month, and the histamine, any strawberries or anything with the histamine, high histamines, I would have a severe reaction. It was amazing. I, that was a real huh, wake-up call for me. But this is so common, and I see this always. And if you eat these foods on a regular basis and you have migraines, you are not going to overcome your migraines until you shelf these foods for a season, usually 30 to 90 days. The most common trigger foods are chocolate, cheese, any kind of cheese, citrus fruits. Why citrus? Because citrus is high in histamine and tyramine, as well as alcohol, like I mentioned, red wine and beer, but also white wine, meat products, any meat products, even wild salmon that I eat that's uh, smoked, wild salmon, that's really high in histamine. Hamburger meat. Remember, you couldn't eat hamburger meat yeah. for that month mm -hmm. because it's high histamine. Uh, dried fruits are real high in histamine. Coffee is another major trigger. You had to cut coffee out for a while, as well as uh, anything with MSG, artificial sweeteners. That's a major migraine trigger. MSG and aspartame or NutraSweet is a huge migraine trigger. And I cannot believe 99.9% .9 of my patients come with migraines have their doctor has never mentioned MSG and NutraSweet or aspartame. Those are probably the two biggest triggers of migraines I see on a constant basis, and they're never addressed. And if you are drinking sodas with NutraSweet or just like my sister over Thanksgiving, she was drinking this lemonade. I said, what's in that? And I looked at it and I said, the f one, one of the first ingredients, aspartame, NutraSweet. And I said, my goodness, aren't you noticing any headaches or any memory loss? Well, yeah, I've noticed some memory problems. I said, that's because of the NutraSweet, the Spartame. That's horrible, but it's a migraine trigger. But also other things that are pretty uh, tri bad triggers are anything that contains wheat or gluten. And this is what how so many people miss it because they're eating gluten or wheat or pasta or crackers or bagels or pretzels or cereals at every meal. They think, hey, we're supposed to have bread every day. Jesus taught us to pray. Give us this day our daily bread. But bread is a major trigger for migraine headaches. And other things are, in some people, avocados. And some people, olives. Some people, ripe bananas. So again... So it's a good idea for the migraine people to do what we call a food journal. Right, so exactly. So that they can sit down and when you write a journal of everything that you eat, and you'll begin to see a pattern of one of these foods, one or a couple of these foods that precede a migraine attack. And then you just find that and isolate it and begin to eliminate it from your diet and then watch your migraines go down, down, down to where they're gone. And then when you do eat it, or you, you absorb these different foods, you do it in a very small moderations because now you know that's your trigger. Now, what's amazing, Don, and this is something that people will have to spend some time looking, you do a desensitization yes. of people <clears throat> when they come to see you as a patient that have food sensitivities and you have incredible success right, with these but, but desensitizations. A, right. But again, we usually don't do it right away. We repair their gut. We treat their either their dysbiosis or excessive amounts of bad bacteria or their candida or their parasites or whatever they have that's irritating their gut. We put them on a gut-healthy diet, such as the gut zone. And then uh, after a month of doing that, 
Then we can, and, and avoiding the food triggers, that's the biggest thing, the food triggers, and most everyone misses that. And then we can start desensitizing them, and we use this, these special acupressure points where we desensitize them, and foods that they used to not be able to eat due to side effects, they can eat them. And I do this every day in my practice. You know, I remember uh, just recently this uh, banker, very well-known banker from uh, New York, his wife... Oh, she had migraine headaches. Really. With severe, I mean, he, he, when he first came, he goes, you know, I heard about you deal with migraines, and I've had my wife to the top specialist in the world. In New York, yeah. In, in New York, <laughs> and we have been to see all of the big. Top neurologists, ex- headache specialists. Neurologists, specialists, yeah. and, you know, they've put her on this medicine and this drug and whatever, and he goes, you know, we just can't drug her up anymore, <laughs> I and I just don't think that this is the answer. And you go, well, let's just watch and see. I cannot tell you. In 30 days, he called our office almost crying. Well, she's having headaches every day. I know. Bad, severe. He said, migraines. you have changed our life, Dr. Colbert. We have got our life back. I've got my wife back. He goes, you're a miracle worker. I've had them to so many do- her to so many doctors and spent thousands of dollars trying to help her and in one month now my wife no she hasn't had a migraine in a month he goes you don't understand what that means to us i was amazing that was pretty cool well well, another food are the nitrites and nitrates that are the preservatives in like bacon and sausage and a lot of your processed meat and your hot dog any processed meat contains these preservatives and also that contains tyramine. So that's another major trigger for a lot of people. They're eating their bacon with all those nitrites and nitrates. And those are major headache triggers for some people. But again, I got to emphasize the worst two that I see are aspartame or NutraSweet and MSG. These are excitotoxins. These are toxins that literally excite the brain cells to death eventually if you don't stop them. So those are huge triggers. But those are the key triggers we find. But then also we need to talk about other uh, things that go awry that set you up for migraine. So we've talked about the gut. You got to heal the leaky gut. You got to correct the food. You got to stop the food sensitivities for a season, usually one to three months. And then we can desense to those and then restore the floor and then remove the bad bacteria or the parasites or the yeast. And then the gut heals. And as the gut heals, it's the whole foundation for health. And then migraines generally go due to the strong gut brain connection. I discussed this again in my Gut Zone uh, book. The other thing that's huge are hormones hormones, hormones, hormones especially in women. Migraines are caused usually in women, uh, we call them menstrual migraines, by an imbalance in estrogen, too much estrogen and not enough progesterone. That's natural bioidentical progesterone, not Provera and not Premarin from pregnant mare's urine, okay? So I see in a lot of my women uh, these headaches, younger women. Now, as they get older, the headaches go away, but then when doctors start these women back on estrogen, they usually crank the headaches back up. So we, we have to balance these hormones. And what we find is most of these women with menstrual migraines are estrogen dominant. They produce too much estrogen and not enough progesterone. That is the simplest uh, thing to uh, stop. And all we do is we put these patients on a DIM, diendomethane, 150 milligrams, once or twice a day. Some people need it three times a day. It's in my Hormone Zone product. Absolutely amazing product because we have three key nutrients for women and two are are real important for headache. That's the DIM for uh, menstrual migraines and vitamin D3, real important for headaches. And then we have K2 that's important for the bones. Uh, But anyway, that's so simple to fix because we lower the estrogen in these estrogen-dominant women with menstrual migraines with a DIM, usually one a day or one twice a day. And then we put them on natural progesterone, either cream or a sublingual tab. And you can get the progesterone over the counter at the health food store. And you have to have a little bit more than what they have there. You have to use usually double the amount and just rub it on your arm, the full length of the arm, rub it in 10 times. But uh, those do wonders for menstrual migraines as well as avoiding those triggers, those food triggers is important. Now, okay, so we've talked about the hormone connection. Then there's the mitochondrial dysfunction connection. Now, this is amazing because when the mitochondria, the little energy storehouses in the cell, 
become what happens, these mitochondria with age and with disease and with COVID, they become dysfunctional. They don't function well. And that's why people start to get a weak heart. That's why so many people are dying of COVID in hospitals. It's not their lungs. It's their hearts wearing out because they're not supporting their heart, their mitochondria, which the heart has more mitochondria than any other area of the body. But what happens is this leads to energy failure or low energy in the nerve tissue, and this will activate headaches. But what we find are there are some amazing supplements that we've had studies show that boost the mitochondrial function that help headaches, such as CoQ10. The CoQ10 is one of the most amazing supplements, not just for the heart, but also it helps migraines. Just 100 milligrams taken three times a day. And one study in the journal Neurology in 2005 showed that it reduced migraine frequency in half in those who took it. These are those with mitochondrial dysfunction. Also, magnesium. Magnesium is amazing for so many people with headaches, and these are just inexpensive supplements. And a study from 1996 in the journal Cephalgia found that given patients 600 milligrams a day or placebo every day for 12 weeks, they found that those uh, that took the magnesium reduced their headaches, migraines, by 41.6%. That's 600 milligrams a day. It's an archelated magnesium. You can take one three times a day. Another supplement, well, uh, those are the main ones for energy, but also we have vitamin B2. Vitamin B2 is known as riboflavin. It's one of the eight B vitamins. These are inexpensive. In the European Journal of Neurology, they found that people who took doses of just 400 milligrams of riboflavin a day for six months reported half the number of headaches per month. And so people take just usually riboflavin, 200 milligrams twice a day. You can get these online. You can get these at health food stores. These are inexpensive. Those are three things that help migraines tremendously that you generally work on the mitochondria. Isn't that amazing, Mary? Magnesium, CoQ10, wow. and riboflavin or B2. Now, some of this is in your little Bible cure booklet for headaches. But like I said, you're going to be updating this in the future for some of the new. Now, what's so cool about this podcast? Is you're you getting can, the newest, best you're getting information. The newest, and not only that, you can replay it and replay it and replay it and write it down and write this information down. Take it to your doctor. Have your doctor listen to this podcast. Uh, let him learn. So that's what's really exciting. I'm excited about this, Don. You're going to help so many people out there with migraines. I'm so excited. Well, also, one other thing that is absolutely amazing is omega-3 fatty acids and migraines. It reduces the frequency of migraines uh, close to 50%. And all of these are natural, and they don't have side effects. So again, these are simple things we can do that help tremendously. Another is just the herb fever few that's been around for centuries to treat headaches. And fever few is one of those herbs that some people absolutely now, say swear that again. by. What is it? Fever few. Few. F fever, like fever, like uh -huh. I've got a fever. And, and then few, F E W. Okay. And there are studies done on this in 2002 that when fever few is taken three times a day for 12 weeks, it reduces migraine headaches significantly. You and get this in a health food yeah, store? Yeah, health food stores have it. It's, okay. it's real inexpensive, and for some people, it's miraculous. And it doesn't interfere with meds and drugs that people could be on? Generally, no. Generally, no. But some people, if they're on heart meds, they need to discuss it with their doctor. I have everyone, or we check it for everyone. But let's talk about other things because we've talked about the gut. We've talked about constipation, chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation is a cause of headaches for so many people, and it can be due to just um, any kind of toxic, toxic material you're exposed to. It can be due to, um, you know, chronic infections like chronic Epstein-Barr virus, chronic CMV, Lyme disease, mold toxins. Mold toxins, people with sick building right, syndrome. Yeah. When they walk in a building, all of a sudden they get that searing headache. That's mold. They have uh, mold toxins. And Dr. Richie Shoemaker wrote a book years ago called Surviving Mold, and he's one of the mold experts. But we find that these people, when they walk in a building, they get that headache like a, um, you know, a 
a knife is going through their head, or some people describe it like an ice pick, hmm. like a sharp ice pick piercing. And it's the mold being blown out through the air vents. No, it's the mold actually coming out through the drywall the from drywall? from water oh, damaged wow. buildings. Mold builds up in that okay. drywall, and it literally outgasses. And when people walk in there, they can tell in five or ten minutes they get sick. They get this horrible headache. They get muscle aches. They get brain fog. They feel horrible. You can get this from a hotel, your home. Oh, sure. At your house. I mean, this could be a problem in people's homes. And this I mean, is missed, I would say, 99.9% wow. of times. And we find these patients and we put them on this program. It's actually super life-changing for them. But, but also, like I say, just the constipation, just fiber. Mary, it is amazing mm-hmm. how water and fiber, two of the cheapest things that you can take, Probably do wonders. Probably correct half the people with migraines. <laughs> oh, yeah, because once you get the gut Jeez. restored and just give them a heaping teaspoon of our fiber zone yep. and just a, ha- a quart and a half or two quarts of water a day, that's one of the most amazing things. Now, the other thing is structural issues that are migraine triggers. It can be upper neck pain. It can be the occiput out of alignment where you see some people, their head's tilted to one side. That's usually the occiput out of alignment. Chiropractors treat this a lot. And I've had chiropractors work for me over the years that are extremely good. And they've taught me a lot of things over the years. Also C1, the atlas, that little vertebra, that top vertebra, the atlas called C1, is the uh, most unusual vertebra in the spine because it's a ring. It doesn't have a spinous process. Real. It doesn't have a vertebral body. It's just a ring. And when it's twisted or torqued just a little, you'll, on your mastoid bone, one will kind of stick out more. And then what happens is when, you, when the person bends their head down and extends their arm, their arms go totally weak. So I can tell immediately who's got a C1 malalignment. And when you just put that, realign it, and I've got a C1 specialist I refer to that Absolutely amazing. He x-rays it. He sees that that C1's torqued a little bit to one side, and he has a special little instrument or this maneuver that he'll get it right in alignment. But You all- like the instrument adjustment. You don't care for the pop-pop hands. Yes. I love the instruments. They're 100 times faster than the human right. hand. Right. And another thing that can do it, which so many people don't realize, is any vertebra in the neck, if it's out of alignment or subluxed, it can trigger headaches and especially migraine. It can trigger either migraine or tension headaches. You know, and that's something that people don't really think about. If you've been rear-ended in a car accident or some sort of car accident, or you've taken some sort of fall, if you're one of these people that you stop and go, you know, I never associated, I fell, or I I I had a rear-end collision, and I didn't even associate that I started having migraines following that, then that's a simple correction, and it's amazing how many people I have seen you get that corrected, and then their migraines are gone. And it's They walk out of the office, the migraines crying, totally gone. Like, and just so happy. And yeah, it's like it's a miracle, yeah. And another thing that is just amazing for migraines, and it is so inexpensive, it's melatonin. Three milligrams at night. No, you're kidding. Absolutely one of the most amazing treatments for migraines is melatonin. Know that. Wow. As far as another thing, again, is stress and tension and TMJ, all of these well, actually, that muscle spasm will trigger tension. We're going to talk about tension headaches next. Okay. Well, now, how many millig- milligrams of, of Three. The, three milligrams. Three? Or you can take more. Just three milligrams. That's all wow. it takes. And it's amazing how it uh, helps those patients with migraine headaches. Okay. So, again, we've talked about the key. Now, there's lots of other supplements. There's butter, burr, which is uh, pita dolex which helps some patients. I've used that over the years, but there's some side effects for some people with that, so I don't use that as much. Cranial sacral therapy helps some people with migraines. Acupuncture is miraculous for some people with migraines. Chiropractic therapy. But if you do do chiropractic therapy, I really recommend chiropractors who do the instrument therapy, like the uh, adjuster. This adjuster is, a, is the most unique little machine and it'll, it'll adjust and, uh, your subluxation, and it's 100 times faster than the human hand. And so chiropractors are literally, uh, ones that have trained on this or, and done it for years, they're amazing how good they are. And so that's one of the critical things, as well as massage. So many people do wonderful with massage and um, biofeedback and physical therapy. All of these are just simple things. One of the easiest things to do and simplest and cheapest is just uh, run some warm bath water, you know, and then put one to four cups of Epsom salt in there, the magnesium. 
Get in there and soak, and it is amazing how the magnesium relaxes those muscles and helps so many people with both tension headaches and migraine headaches. Well, that's a good, good thing. Easy, cheap to do. And wow. another is lavender oil. Now, lavender oil is really good for uh, some people with migraines and some with tension headaches. They can just put a couple of drops of lavender oil in a pot of boiling water or then get a infu- uh, an infuser. And just inhale that lavender oil, and it just relaxes the whole body. You know, that what's amazing, Don, is that, you know, people are under stress right now. There's a lot of stress. And that's a major trigger for migraines I and tension headaches. I was to say, so that's a great quick fix that if you're getting uh, under tremendous stress to do that, get in a hot tub with that Epsom salt and let the body absorb the magnesium and... Bingo, relax you. Oh, it sounds so good. I want to go do it. Well, right that now. <laughs> and then a um, good massage. Get yeah. in the hot hot tub bath with Epsom salt, and then yeah. have uh, you can get those little massage instruments that your spouse could use on you, or you can just um, you know just do some gentle massage. Or some people get those uh, hot packs that you put in the microwave. Those are amazing. There's these herbal hot packs that some people use. So let me ask you, Epsom salt is magnesium? Yeah, that's magnesium. Sure. That's all that is. That's okay. all it is. I, I didn't know that. But i got to say, too, biofeedback for some is amazing, where it literally trains you to relax those muscles. Acupuncture for some people is absolutely uh, miraculous for some. For others, it does nothing. But, again, the, the key thing I find with migraines Treat the gut, treat the gut, give water, give fiber, give a few key supplements. My favorite are riboflavin, CoQ10, omega-3, magnesium. These are just no-brainers, simple, melatonin, vitamin D3. And then uh, it's amazing with those simple things, and especially the water and the fiber, and then meditating on God's Word, getting at peace. Turn off the news. News is triggering your headache, especially tension headaches, but also migraines. And too many people are focused on the news. They get tight. The muscles get tight. And then all of a sudden, the migraine comes in. The jaw clenches. And we're going to talk about TMJ when we get into tension. But uh, tension and stress will trigger migraines and tension headaches and TMJ headaches. And so, again, real important, another headache we're going to talk about, sinus headaches, Mary. Sinus headaches are so easy. Well, let's go ahead. You want to talk about those now? We're going to have to go to headache part two so that you can cover. Okay, yeah, well, we next... got to do tension headaches and okay. sinus headaches because sinus headaches are the easiest thing to fix. Okay, and people so... are taking antibiotics and they're messing the gut up and they're making uh, causing more tension and more migraine headaches. I know, and they're this stuck is, in a vicious cycle. This is a lot of information I but, know for people who suffer uh, migraines. But you know what the key is here, Don? You're trying to help people get to the root of the problem. Exactly. You're exactly. not trying to mask it with medicines and drugs which is typically how people are treated. And you don't like that. You like to get to why it's happening, get to the root of the problem, and then support the body in the right direction so that you eliminate the trigger. Absolutely. A lot of the treatments people are taking are hurting the gut. Right. For headaches, they're taking Advil, ibuprofen, naproxen. These all hurt the gut. They cause leaky gut, increase intestinal permeability, which literally make the headaches worse over time. Okay, be sure and go to our website, drcolbert.com. We have products on there that will help you with your... We're going to have a podcast, too, that is Headache Part 2. And you can get some of the products because Don's got a whole lot more information he wants to give to you. Well, one thing is hemp oil. This is one of the things that helps with stress so much. And so many headaches are literally triggered by stress, tension, uh, these are triggers for tension headaches and migraines. So our little hemp oil, little bottle of hemp oil, non-addictive. You can take a dropper full as needed, and it is amazing how so many tension and other, even migraines are improved with that hemp oil, Mary. And water, those two things, and fiber, okay? So that's something simple you can do. We wanted to leave you with. That's inexpensive, and it also helps you sleep really well by relaxing your body. So God bless you. We're excited. We hopefully have given you the keys and the answers for your migraine headache. God bless you. Okay, see you on part two of Headaches. Thank you.